My name is Dr. Jeffrey Archibald, and I practice restorative and preventative dentistry at Twin City Sedation in Forest Lake, Minnesota. This video is about how side stream capnography works and how to successfully implement it into your dental sedation practice. Side stream capnography monitoring involves a pump that constantly pulls in air as the patient breathes. A sample of exhaled air from the patient is transported through a tube such as a cannula or a sample line into the monitor where a CO2 sensor is located. The sensor measures the amount of CO2 present in the patient's exhaled air by the amount of light absorbed. The measurement is taken at the point of end exhalation and the monitor displays the end tidal CO2 and respiration rate. Before entering the monitor, the exhaled air passes through a disposable filter and water droplets fall into a moisture trap. This prevents condensation from reaching the CO2 sensor. Selecting and using the right cannula is important, allowing dentists to work in the mouth and still get an accurate reading. Two types of cannulas are used with capnography during sedation dentistry, nasal cannulas and oral nasal cannulas. Nasal cannulas capture exhaled air only from the nose. These work well for many patients as long as they continue to breathe through their nose. However, for patients who are mouth breathers, you may consider using an oral nasal cannula. An oral nasal cannula has a small sampling tube near the patient's mouth to capture the exhaled air. This type of cannula is divided with two sampling lines one to deliver oxygen and the other to sample CO2. A nasal hood or mask can be used with the cannula for delivery and scavenging of nitrous oxide and oxygen while simultaneously measuring end tidal CO2. Place the nasal hood or mask over the cannula. Use a mask that fits the patient well to get a good seal and prevent leaks. A nasal hood with a built-in CO2 connection can also be used for delivery and scavenging of gases. Take a baseline reading of the patient's end tidal CO2 and respiration rate before applying the nasal hood. Flow from the nasal hood can affect the CO2 reading due to turbulent flow inside the nasal hood. You may already be using either a traditional style or Bluetooth stethoscope in your practice for monitoring respiration and are wondering why you still need capnography. With a traditional stethoscope, it can be difficult to hear adequately because dental procedure areas can be noisy. An amplified Bluetooth stethoscope is preferred because it has a microphone built into a housing that minimizes procedural noise, amplifies breathing sounds, and is equipped with adjustable volume controls. However, with capnography, you are getting much more vital information on your patient's respiratory status in real time. You can see immediately how well the patient is ventilating. You also have audible alarms to alert you in the event of a change in respiratory status, such as respiratory depression. Before beginning the procedure, it is important to check all of your patient's vital signs and document them. Check vital signs again operatively and postoperatively to confirm the patient's recovery and identify any adverse responses to the sedation. Follow the documentation protocol already established in your practice. The monitor also has memory capability. Data are automatically stored in memory and may be downloaded and saved in the patient's record in an EMR system. Data should be downloaded after every patient. Capnography can be an essential monitor for patient safety during moderate sedation and can provide the earliest indicator of an adverse breathing event. By incorporating capnography into your protocol, you will be meeting the new ADA recommended guidelines and making sedation dentistry safer for your patients.